Hey everybody, how's it going? Shane Olson here again. I'm, uh, as you can notice, I'm not streaming from my house. I'm streaming from somewhere else. So hopefully it goes well. Hey Ian, how's it going? Is there no sound? There should be. Can anybody else verify if you can hear me or not? There is? Okay. It's just low? I wonder if I can turn up my mic volume. Check it. No, it's cranked as high as I can get it. Hmm. Yeah, sorry, I'll try and I'll try and talk sorta of loud. My uh, I've kind of lost my voice a little bit, so I apologize for that. But uh, this is what we're going to be working on today. I'm working on my MacBook, so um, forgive me if I'm a little slow. So you guys on YouTube, I guess the sound isn't working over there very well. I thought that you can hear me. Oh, really, Ian? That's funny. I'm glad you could hear me. That's really strange. And my fans are going kind of crazy. Like my, not my, not my sculpting fans, but my fans on my MacBook. How'd your stream go, Ian? Hey Ryan. Ryan, I just bought your uh, your Ryan's tools. They're awesome. I had I had no idea that you went to that much uh, that much work to make your tools awesome. Holy cow, that's cool. So I'm looking forward to checking them out and using them. Thanks for uh, putting putting forth all the effort. Two years of learning, I wouldn't even know where to start. You know, I was, uh, I'm every single thing that you were talking about in those scripts. It was it's funny because you're like, yeah, ZBrush. It's you know like with the simple turntable. You know all those little features that you're just like, oh man, I wish I could just hit a button and not have to deal with all that. And you're like, yeah, I'd like to do that too boom put it in the in the tools so yeah sorry the volume is low i don't know how to turn it up if anybody is a mac user and if you know how to turn up the volume i'm, I'm just i'm new to the mac world so i don't know how to do it Sound input, maybe? Oh, here we go. Okay. Is that better? I cranked it up. Check one, two, three. It's a little echoey in here, too.
I want. <laughs> is my voice echoing? Check one, two. Is that any better? No echo, okay. I'm gonna crank the gain, you guys tell me if it's too much. Check test one, two, there we go. Okay. All right, there we go. I put a, I put a gain filter on it inside of, uh, inside of OBS. All right, well, thanks for letting me know, guys. I'm on these. I'm on some iPod earbuds that are wired hooked to my MacBook. There's a hiss now? Oh, gosh. Okay. Let me see if I can put a, a hiss filter on there. Hold on a second. Not a noise gate. Because my fan is screaming, so... My video's not showing. What is the deal? Oh, that's because I'm I'm in audio filters probably. Yeah, I don't sorry, I'll have to mess with the hiss stuff later on. Unless that's better. Yeah, my video's down in the corner. You guys can't see that? I'm not I'm not at home right now. So, like my regular home. I'm I'm on location. Okay, I popped a a different filter on there too. All right, you guys. Thanks. Hopefully that's better. Okay, so let's hop back over to ZBrush. So it's not my usual camera. It's not my usual microphone. Appreciate your patience. It shouldn't be. Maybe reload Twitch. Yeah, try reloading Twitch. Is that happening for anyone else? Is my video frozen? Okay, so this is where we got to last week. Um, I want to uh, I want to put the the hair and the hat and the the earrings and this little kind of thing around the around the neck. So awesome. Okay, glad I fixed it. And then I want to fix her lips and a couple things like that. Just get her a little closer to the concept. So welcome to the live stream, guys. You like the new camera setup? It's just temporary, but thanks. I might I might keep the circle when I go back when I go back to stream from my house. Okay. I figured I would have more uh, more issues than I do, and I'm also using a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. So um, I've, I've been wanting to get one of those for a while and uh, just to kind of ch change away from the Cintiq a little bit just to see what it was like because I, I was on a Wacom, a Wacom Intuos for a good portion of my career and I kind of miss it a little bit. The lighting makes you look skinny. Well, thanks. <laughs> I have lost quite a few pounds. I went on a whole food plant-based diet, which I recommend to anybody. <laughs> I 
Yeah, your fans. Get, well, in a in a MacBook, they just scream. So it, I have it sitting up on a book so it can breathe, but it's still screaming. Let's crank the scene intensity down. You know, yeah, I used to be a, I used to be a heavy meat eater and I was able to switch and I feel so much better. Okay, let's see. Let's, I'm going to just kind of um, block in the, um, Block in the hat. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> hey, Trax, that's true, man. That's so true. Come, come to find out. Let's see. Uh, and that's, it's, it's probably a good thing, right? You don't want your Mac to overheat. Um, also... Hang on. Is that how we think it is? What's up, Justin? How you doing, man? It's weird. Your name is purple, so it's hard to read on here. <laughs> how you doing, brother? Did you, uh, did you participate on the, in, the, in Lightbox at all? Lightbox was going on last weekend. I watched a lot of talks on there. It was pretty good. Um, one thing I wasn't expecting with the Lightbox uh, Expo was, um, <laughs> Frank, sure, anytime, um, was they have a Discord channel. And inside that Discord channel, they have some, uh, whoops, let me get this right. Got to figure out my hotkeys here. No, no. Oh, that's it. Okay, shift command. the The keys are the keys are different, so I'm trying to get used to that. There we go. And the reason this looks the way it does is because I have live boolean turned on. I would definitely go with a non-screen tablet. You know, it's funny. Uh, Note Lightbox for me was way busy. Busy is good, man. Busy is good. Um, yeah, Ryan, the, it's interesting. Like, each of them have their goods and bads, right? Uh, Cintiq is great because of the one-to-one -one feedback. Your, where your pen is on the screen is where you're going to draw, right? There's not a disconnect with a, with a tablet. But I find that it's not that big a deal. Um, so I, I, I absolutely love my Cintiq as well. But... Um, for some reason, I can't get it in a location where it doesn't make my back hurt. That's the only, that's the, my biggest complaint about it. Not that it's a complaint. And also, Ryan, holy cow, you're, uh, sorry, I, I got to keep talking about Ryan's tools because I, I didn't know about them before. But uh, having the ability to just pop the gizmo to the bottom of the object, man, that's, that's super strong stuff. Yeah, you'll see these discs in front of her eyes because I was using those for uh, uh, the subtraction with live Boolean. You have yours on, a, on an, oh, an arm? That's interesting. If you guys don't know who Jay Fields is, that's Justin Goby Fields. He runs... Uh, 10,000 hours. I'm not sure for, for how, how long, though. Justin's an amazing artist, good friend of mine. And also, uh, Ryan Kittleson is here. He's the one who, who made uh, Ryan's tools, and he just barely streamed right before I did. You did a great job, Ryan, by the way. It's very hard to interact with an audience and sculpt at the same time. I'm not going to lie. 
and uh, Ryan, you did a great job at that. Still figuring it out. You, you know, I've oftentimes thought about making a, a group for my uh, 3D character workshop, but I'm just like, oh man, if it's, if it's anything like Justin's having to deal with, I don't know if I want to, you know? So much extra time and effort with no... I'm, there, there's gains, but in different ways, you know? Okay. I have, I bought the, I bought the base, um, the, the Cintiq base that has two arms, so it, I can only lift it up and down. I can't move it around, you know, and how's the arm for stability? Do you have to have it sitting up against your desk or can you have it kind of floating and it'll still work or will it bounce? I've never used one. Oops, I didn't mean to do auto groups. I meant to do group by normals. There we go. Group by normals will um, group anything past the set degrees. So right now I have my set degrees to 45. So anything smaller than uh, 45 degrees will get a new poly group. And that way I can go into my uh, Z modeler and do some extrude poly group all. I can extrude this out. Can float a bit but I have it resting on its edge okay cool <laughs> no none of that spear I've never been a fish guy anyway so but yep none whole food plant-based just means uh, yeah mainly whole like when you say whole food that just means like in its raw state if you if you can help it Okay, and then I gotta bend this going up here. Anyway, Ryan, I'm really, I'm really interested in. Uh, I bought your pro version because twenty bucks totally worth it. And I'm, I'm anxious to to use it. So I'm just gonna leave this capped. Usually, um, nowadays, I will, uh, I will leave my objects with thickness so they're watertight because I've been 3D printing quite a bit. And uh, instead of le you know, making this hat like a real hat where it has thickness to it. Let's see if there... Play to you for giving up me wouldn't be able to do it be like crack addict. uh james i recommend a book called the pleasure trap give, give that a read if you if you want to if you're if you're really interested anyway is it i yeah juicing is great version 2.1 coming out very soon lots of stuff for 3d printing awesome yeah man when I get in there, maybe I'll... Do you take requests? <laughs> I think a screen tab is better for 2D. I, agree. I I have to agree with you there. Especially for storyboarding. If you're a storyboarder, man, there's nothing. Even like an iPad would be fantastic. Okay, let's see. I was, just, I was thinking about doing, like extruding the bill of the hat out from here, but I think I'm going to make it a separate piece. All right, Ryan. I will. Thanks, man. You know, and I, I have to say, I don't know why I never tried your tools in the past. I apologize. I guess I think it was more of a, I didn't really understand what they were. Because there's so many out there, you know, so many different. And, you know, I don't want to bog my ZBrush down with stuff, but watching, watching your little uh, demo, demos, um, so far, I haven't I haven't been able to watch very many of them, but they seem super super helpful. Let's see. Okay, um, split this off. It's 
funny. She's got a bald head with this cap floating, floating cap. So a mirror and weld will give you the center line, but it will automatically crease it, which I don't really care for. There are another thing that was that I was super jazzed about is uh, centering your gizmo without having to turn on and off activate symmetry. That that'll save me a lot of time. There's just little little uh, quality of life things that you don't really think about, you know. Let's see, why isn't this moving? Move, there we go. I guess because it was hidden behind that thing. All right, let's cut in some more edges here. And I'm going to crease these edges too. And then uh, from the front, sorry if I'm kind of uh, slow today. I'm, I'm trying to get used to these keys. So another trick you can do is with this bill, I want to, um, I want to crease all these edges, right? So I, if I do group by normals, um, except for I want these two to be in the same group. Let's see if I can increase that. Maybe is it decrease? I'm trying to remember which way it needs to go. Nope. Increase. Oh. Thanks, autosave. Too much. I can't get it. I'm just going to do it by hand. Anyway, <laughs> if you could, if you can get the poly groups like that, then you can just do uh, crease by poly groups, and it'll put creases around. But I'm just going to do it by hand. Let's just do this. Uh, let's see, crease, edge loop complete. Oops. How's this, how's this string going so far anyway? I was worried about the, uh, oh, that's why maybe, because I had, I had a mask on there. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Okay, this is being weird. I want you crease. There we go. Crease. That's what I wanted. All right. A yellow bill. Yeah, I'm at a hotel. I'm trying to stream from a hotel and they have good they can have good Wi-Fi, so hopefully hopefully it's doing all right. I can still stream. See, I'm dedicated. It's going well? Okay, awesome. Good to hear. I was, I was worried about it. <laughs> Yep, the show must go on, right? As they say. <laughs> okay, I want to crease this back a little edge. There we go. If it is dropping frames, I apologize. Yeah, there's nothing I can really do about it. And the room is echoey and... Yeah, it's kind of... Hey, Oscar, thank you. Hey, Charlie. I'm doing well, thanks. I 
I guess I could have put dynamic thickness on this bill too, and it would have worked pretty well. Okay, kind of want to get a better shape to that hat. Maybe uh, crease the front. How do you keep crease edges when you export it to Maya? Um, so you can use GoZ. GoZ will hold on to the creases going back and forth. Um, I think OBJ might let them go. Um, I think FBX, I can't, I can't remember if FBX or OBJ will hold on to them or not, but I know that GoB will because it saves out an MA file when you push it over to Maya with Go B, or Go Z, sorry, not Go B, that's going to Blender. So uh, yeah, that's how you keep creases. You didn't want to pack your whole computer stuff. Yeah, right, all that stuff. And my awesome microphone, I have a Shure mic, you know, those really expensive like Shure microphones. I didn't bring that. I'm talking to you on iPod earbuds that are like $10. <laughs> So sorry if it's not the, the, the highest production quality ever, but we get what we get, right? To do with what we got. Okay, so let's see. I want to crease this to... <laughs> Thanks, Ian. I, I need to see how that Demon Hunter scope's coming along. I'm really curious about that. Hey, Space Cookie. Nice name. Probably fill this with gray eventually. Still locking in that pose. This is the second statue I've done with two characters with dynamic poses. Man, that is, yeah, that's some, uh, that's a lot of crazy work. That's good. Okay, let's let's start blocking out this hair. Let me grab this color. Hey, William. How's it going? Um, turn off symmetry for a second. And I do like having my my wheel back on my tablet. So uh, the um, the Cintiqs they have those little remotes, and I like them. But for my Cintiq, for some reason I don't know why, it just slides right down the the front of it. I don't know if it's a a bad magnet in mine or exactly just what but it doesn't stick to my the surface of my Cintiq very well, so I can't use it very much. And uh, Wacom was kind enough to give me another remote to try out, and that one still slides as well. So I don't, I don't know what's going on. But um, I had a, 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 a Cintiq, um, what was it called? I want to say a 52 HD or something, 50 something HD. And that had built-in buttons on either side. And um, the, here I can turn this live boolean on again so you can see the eyes aren't all messed up. 
She seems like a punk rock girl with one piece of hair coming out. Um, but I really miss the di the dials because the the it had two dials on it, one on the left side, one on the right side. And the left side one I could set up to my brush size so I can just scroll my wheel to make the brush size go up and down. Super handy. And um, oh, you, you got stronger magnets? I have some stronger magnets. I have the 27, Tom, so they stick on the 32. I think Justin was here. If Justin is still here, do you have problems with your, your remote sliding? He's the one who got me to keep trying it. And it, I still I didn't like it. Your position's almost upright. Okay, so if you you got stronger magnets and you you were able to get it to stick, that's awesome. I have some strong magnets that I use for my uh, my some metal tools that I use for like files and stuff for painting my figurines. Well, for filing my figurines, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna Z-remesh this little guy. Let's see. Let's do it at point, point one. Let's go all the way down, see what it gets, gives us. I have both 27, doesn't stick at all. The 32 is like a rock, really. There we go. It's a good Z-remesh, I think. The tip looks a little weird, but let's turn on AccuCurve. AccuCurve is interesting. It feels like it um, it changes the brush profile to be pointy instead of rounded. So I can pull like this hair out to a point. That works quite well. Kind of like the snake hook brush does. All right, James, have a good dinner. Let's see. I haven't used anything except for a Wacom tablet, so I wouldn't know about the Huion's or the Wynovas or anything like that. <laughs> I don't have any experience with that stuff. I've put a lot of effort into getting the remote off of the Cintiq. Oh, really? That's interesting. I'll have to message you later, Mark, and ask you which what... what uh, magnets you ended up getting. Hey Giovanni, how's it going? Okay, let's see. Let's, I need to block in this side. Is this process feasible for sculpting? Block with IMMs, DynaMesh or equivalent to details, you measure to adjust the mesh, subdivide the mesh for final adjustments? Yes. That's what I use. That's how I do it. And it doesn't just have to be for stylized characters either. <laughs> Giovanni, you're making me blush. Thank you, though. Okay. Let's see. Let's get... Uh, Another sphere in here. Do I miss any questions? If I did, feel free to re-ask them. Sometimes I get talking and sculpting and I miss conversations. Okay, wow. Um, I'm just noticing that this is, uh, I, just, I need to make her hat a lot bigger. Because <laughs> look at the, like, the distance between her ear and this hat is like acres. Acres and acres. So let me get this blocked out in place here. And this hair cuts across a lot more. Yes, that's another thing is sometimes I get talking and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here. Just going through the motions.
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So were you in the conversation in uh, on Discord? One of the... That was a, that's great that they added that, honestly. So what A is talking about is um, for this year for Lightbox, they added a, a Discord channel and they had a 3D, a 3D chat channel. And uh, Bird and John from Blizzard were in there as, long, as well as a whole bunch of other people just hanging out sculpting. And it was really, it was nice. I enjoyed it. Wish I could have stayed longer. Why did you disappear from the Pixelogic live stream calendar? I was surprised to see you streaming today. Oh, I didn't know that. You know, the... Uh, I have to say the, the the live streaming calendar and so it's done by one person that works at Pixel Logic. His name's Kyle. Kyle shows up every once in a while. Great guy, and he has to manually go through and and there's people that cancel, people that show up, you know, at different times, and he kind of has to manage all of that, and sometimes uh, it, it gets away from him. So, uh, and, and it's also really hard to kind of um, make sure people are in there and advertised and stuff like that. Because there's a lot of streamers and a lot of, a lot of time. Okay, let's see. I'm going to combine, well, I'm going to move these two together. Let's see here. Got to remember the, there it is, remember the hotkeys. So, turn off this again. Make this bigger and drop it down. It's a big hat. How many config files do you have? Are you using your own today? Config files? Um, so I only have one. And yes, I, it's my own. Um, so I give away these brushes and my, I keep wanting to look to the left because that's where my camera is at home. <laughs> but um, I give away these brushes and, and this user interface and a startup project file and that startup project file has my configurations built into it um, you can kind of see it right here this ruler file right here and when i start my zbrush sessions i start with that ruler file so it's not really a config file although i do store config after i load that project But you're welcome to go grab it over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Need to pull the front of this hat forward. Uh, thanks, Ian. Yes, I also have an online course called the 3D Character Workshop where I go into depth and teach you how to create stylized characters just like this one. Yeah, while you're there. <laughs> uh, oh, that was you for your Luca fan art? Oh, awesome. Oh, so let me show you something. Um... So you know how I was talking about making your eyes bigger? Uh, look how big these eyes are inside of the head here. See that? And that, like I said, that creates less 
less bulge. Does uh, yeah, see how they're not? I mean, these these are different uh, different style of eyes, but you can kind of see how they work. What I was kind of talking about. So then the curvature of the surface of the eye isn't as bulgy. Hey, Taldon, how's it going? Come on, select the hair. There we go. All right, let's push this down. Yeah, you don't want to make your eyeballs the size of your eye opening. That's not even in a real, uh, a realistic person like a, you know, like you. <laughs> they're they're larger inside your head than the opening. Okay, save. Let's get that curve going. Yeah, don't be afraid to. So, so what I usually do, my default, if I'm making a stylized character, um, by default, I usually make them as big as I can get them inside the head, and then I'll shrink them if I need to. Because usually, uh, more often than not, you'll want to uh, scale them up, but if they're already scaled up, then you don't have to worry about it. Thanks, Nightbot. Yes, uh, ZBrush 2021.7 is available now for purchase and to download for free if you already own ZBrush. Yeah, thank you, Neil. Neil's my living bot, my bot that's alive. <laughs> Three to, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the what the real like the real ratio is. I thought it was even less than that, but maybe I'm not sure. Okay, let's make these little side guys. Local symmetry. Now one thing is, um, you'll notice I have these hairs masked and these are not, but I also have trans or topological turned on. They don't, they don't like to uh, play together well because topological is masking and masking is masking. So it's like you're doubling up on the masking. So if you're gonna have masks, turn that off. And if you're not, you can turn it on. That makes sense. So I'm gonna clear these masks off. And then I can just use topological. Hey, that dude, Henry. Yeah, I have actually. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> yeah, I've lost about 50 pounds over the course of the last year. 
I think you notice it more when I don't have my giant headphones on. Okay, so I'm liking that. Let's fill in the, the hair over here. She's looking a little barren. Yeah, it was. Yep. Just for my health, I went whole food plant based. Which I recommend for anybody wanting to get a little healthier yeah old man here like spotty <laughs> like some bumpkin dr eric berg i think so um i follow uh, mcdougall more so yeah, check out his starch solution. Really, really good stuff. If you want to know. All right, tell me if I missed any. Man, my, this is this is making my shoulders hurt a little bit because uh, it's a little higher than I'm used to. <laughs> so I'm taking just a little break. Um, all right, I'll do some shoulder shrug shrugs. <laughs> all right. Maybe I'll have to fix, I'll have to get a booster chair or something. Okay, let's see. I can probably mirror this one over. Thanks, Bean. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Luigi does some great stuff. This is uh, originally done by Luigi Lucerelli. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his name, but I like to make it sound Italian, like Lucerelli. I don't know if it's Lucarelli. I'll have to ask him. Lucerelli. Okay, I'm going to split this off so I can mirror it. Let's see, I think I need to turn off local symmetry and then do it. There we go. Yeah, I think I think the ponytail is the thing that's really going to sell it the most, and then her getting her collar worked out. Okay, now that these are sp uh, where is this hair? Oh, it looks like I haven't filled these yet. Okay. 
Okay, so now I can merge this down. Merge, merge. All right, and then I'll just make a big, a big sphere for the back of her hair. It goes all up into that ponytail. I'm not sure if I like these kind of lumps in her skull right here. I'm gonna fix that. Whoops, that's paint. Nope, would help if I had a symmetry turned on. And sh she's pretty dense with Sculptress Pro, so smoothing goes slow. You can see the topology right there. I need to Z remesh it. Okay, but we'll just cover it on up with hair for the sphere. Uh, let's see. I need to reset my gizmo first. There we go. How long does your work workshop last? Um, it's lifetime access. So um, I actually based it off of uh, ZBrush's or Pixelogic's business model because I'm, as a user of ZBrush, I'm a huge fan of their business practices and how they, it's like buy it once, all updates are free. You know, as a user, I love that. So I modeled my, my business after that. And so you buy it once and all updates are free. Um, and I've, I've basically tripled the content since I launched the course four, four years ago, three and a half, four years ago. Um, so, so yeah, I don't, I don't charge every time I add, add something new, um, which I wish every business would do. I'm looking at you Autodesk. Adobe. Yeah, you know, you know, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, um, so it's it basically it takes as long as you want it to take, because I also know people are busy. They have busy lives. They work. Um, so I wanted to make it for people who have jobs and need to fit it into their busy work schedules. Let's see, I need to split this off. Pay per day? Is that a thing? Man. One of the, one of the reasons I remain such a loyal ZBrush fan all these years, so respectful of the user, yep. Uh, so you make live Q and A's forever. Um, I have so far. It's on hold right now because I'm updating. I'm re-recording the course in weekly challenges to give people some deadlines, like weekly deadlines in, um, like specific, like for the first one, for example, is a Saturday morning cartoon block out challenge. So you block out a Saturday morning cartoon, and that's your first week. And the next week is. Um, stylized anatomy. So you take what you learned in the first week and apply it to the second week with some more knowledge. Um, and then it kind of builds on from there. So I'm redoing that right now. And some of the, all of those are, are live um, and with some guests too. I bring on some guests like uh, last week was props, the props challenge. And I brought on Paul Gabry from Pixelogic because um, who better knows props than Paul, right? So um, that's uh yeah, it's been great. So as soon as that gets done, then I'll go back to doing uh, live Q&As. So um, that's one thing I might, I might, because uh, I was doing them every other week, so twice a month. And that's, that feels like a pretty good cadence for most students. And I'm also adding an acceleration program pretty soon, which is more mentoring. 
the which I'm also excited about. You buy tokens? That is that is horrible. Why would any that's like carnival crap, right? It's like buy your tickets to ride the rides. That's the worst. Who came up with that? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm excited about the mentor program because um, I, I, I introduce, uh, well, I, when you first purchase it, I basically have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you and we talk about your goals and your career, your career goals, your character goals, where you're headed, and then we work on which characters to build and flesh out your portfolio. And then you can talk about like which, um, which studios you want to apply for or freelance jobs you want to go for, you know, and, and then if you're having art tests, we can go over your art tests and make sure they're good to go, that kind of stuff. So super excited. It's a convoluted system and your tokens expire after one year, no refunds. That is totally, that's, that's the worst, the worst. Oh my gosh. I feel like this is the beginning of the end for them. That feels desperate, right? Does that feel desperate? Mm. Yeah, that feels desperate. Oh yeah, it's gonna it's gonna push people. I don't I don't like talking about other software because this is the Pixel Logic live stream. I like you know, keep the focus on ZBrush, but. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna send people running. They'll sell gift cards. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's oh so bad. <laughs> Alright. Let's try and make uh make this ponytail. Hey Jimmy, how you doing man? Thanks, brother. Jimmy in the his house. Speaking of, okay, this is one more thing. Dude, Jimmy, I got to talk to you about this some more, but um, that's that's one more thing is uh, with this, with the acceleration program that I'm putting together, I'm also bringing on additional coaches. So it's not just me being a mentor. Um, and Jimmy Levinsky is one of them. So, hey, Jimmy. Well, he will be, not yet, but soon. Sorry if, if I if I said that out of turn, Jimmy. I hope you don't mind. Should have asked you first. <laughs> nice. So you guys, if you didn't know, I'm I'm trying to get the some top tier stylized character sculptors in as as uh, coaches because I really, really want to make it worth it for you and give you access to essentially people in the industry that you normally wouldn't have access to. Um, sure, sure. Like, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about two hours per week per, per coach. So super minimal effort, I think but maximum feedback, you know, I think it'll be great. I basically build these things around what I would have wanted if I was just starting out in my career. That's what the 3D Character Workshop was when I first built it. I'm like, okay, I'm tired of these box schools, you know, like these pop-up tech schools. Every, every kid that's going there is like, I wanna work in the game industry. And they're like, let's put something together that teaches people how to make characters in the game industry. And it's just garbage. 
and people are spending like thousands of dollars going to these box schools trying to learn this stuff and I'm just, it just made me angry so that's my solution to it it's like okay let's teach people how to how to make characters the right way get jobs instead of being promised So yeah, that's how the three character workshop came about. Cause I went to one of those box schools myself, and I was, I'm I'm not I'm not bragging. I'm I'm saying this in frustration. Is we we were teaching the we were teaching the the teachers, cause it was so new back then, you know. And they they were this was like alias wavefront, soft homage, that kind of stuff, and. They didn't know what they were doing at all. And here I'm paying exorbitant, exuberant amount of money to go to this school to learn animation and stuff. And it's just like, oh my gosh. Oh man, thank you so much. I love hearing that stuff. Hey, Neil, could you grab that comment, please? <laughs> I love grabbing little little testimonials here and there. I'm in a tutoring program right now for classmates, and I'm told I've been super helpful, and I enjoy helping people, but I've been doing for free, and it's kind of time-consuming. Yeah, man, you gotta you got to make it worth it for you. What was learning faster, teaching myself? Yeah, so, Ryan, you have... I just heard today that you have a couple of... Uh, classes over on on Udemy something like that waited almost a year to get into the 3d part of my education way back in 99 a year before <laughs> oh my gosh and the teacher haven't even opened the manual before teaching oh gosh doesn't that just irritate the heck out of you how could you how could you be happy with your investment it's such a huge investment even my acceleration program is going to be like a, a fraction of what they charged. A fraction. You have Photoshop and stuff. Yeah. When I went to school, I had like math and English in my 3D character animation program. It was nice, but it's like, what? Let's get into it already. Jeez. Hey, JD, it's going well. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, yeah. A free, free, you get, you get what you pay for kind of a thing. I got to reset this gizmo again. Okay, I, I keep forgetting to reset that gizmo. And Ryan, I maybe maybe I can uh, offer up some of my. Well, some of your primitives look great. I, I wonder if we can add this one to your list. <laughs> this is my uh, this is my appendage insert mesh. I'll show you what it looks like because all the rest of them I think you have pretty much. These are just different resolutions of a sphere, a quad sphere. And then these are just cubes. One of them has been split and the other one's just regular. And then this cylinder is a quad cylinder. So it doesn't have poles, it has quads so you can subdivide it. This one is for like fingers and arms and stuff like that. It's essentially just a, an extruded sphere with, um, it tapers. So that'd be because I love how your insert primitives, like how you can mask off a, a, a spot and just insert a primitive right there. That's so awesome. Save me so much time. <laughs> Tighten up the graphics on level. Two. That's that was a running joke in, in our studio. I'll be right back. I'm just going to go tighten up the graphics on level three. So, 
That's that's one that's an ad from one of those big box schools that just wants to charge you. Now I have to say there are some schools that are fantastic, like uh, like Nomen, for example, fantastic, right? Because because Alex, the guy that runs Nomen, he hires um, people that are working in the industry, like like Justin, for example, or Leticia, or different people. Um, it's pricey, but it's worth it. So uh, and then like like here, the University of Utah has a whole bunch of x game like some people from my studio uh teaching game design stuff like that and so you kind of have to do your research there are schools out there that that do their due diligence okay this is not going fast enough what why did that do that I was weird. It, it like popped back up. I better save this. <laughs> I don't think I've saved it since I started today. Yeah, and ask about their placement. Um, there's some animation schools that are really good too, like Animation Mentor. Anim School is great. Anim School has a great program if you want to get into rigging, animation. They do some modeling too. Yeah, Jimmy, right? Luigi, that, so he just barely uh, made a drawing with it was a little more, um, I, I, hate, I hate this word with a passion for describing characters, but a little more edgy. So uh, a little older, like mature and a little grungier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's and and he's got he's got volumes down. Like he knows his volumes, so it makes it makes him much easier to uh, sculpt. Somebody asked me the other day, what what do I look for in a concept that I want to sculpt? I think they were alluding to, can I give you one of my concepts to sculpt? But my answer was, yeah, the cyberpunk character. But my my answer was. Um, I look for characters that are a, a well-designed, appealing, and have good volume, because good volume is is key. If if the uh, concept doesn't have good volume, th and it's all cheated, you know, like two D cheaty, then it's going to be really hard to sculpt. So, um, also I look for characters in a three-quarter view pose rather than straight on from the front or from the side, because they're just they're easier to um, to to figure out because a concept is a blueprint it's like building a house and if you only had one house drawing from the front you're not going to be able to build the rest of it right you got pages missing um, you can make it up but it might not be what what the uh, initial architect intended so it goes the same with the concept if you if you have look or if if the character's in a crazy like uh, comic book pose coming right at you and you can't see any of the body then you have a bunch of the pages of the blueprint missing so you need to have a full body like this three-quarter view um, i don't ask the concept artist for front view side view because more more likely than not that concept artist is going to get it wrong uh, you know believe it or not they even though they draw the drew the original, asking them to dissect their own drawing is, I don't. It's kind of lazy, and you're you're asking them to do your job for you, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, a just good three quarter view, and if it has detail from the back, a good back three quarter view is also uh, recommended if it's needed. Um, let's see. Hello, sir. This is Maniac from India. Working as 3D freelance artist, can you guide me how to get 3D job abroad in America? That's a huge question. Um, the only the only answer I really have that I can answer short 
is um, have a really, really strong standout portfolio and just apply for the, for the jobs as they come up. Because when you're abroad, it's a little harder to network. Um, I think networking is very, um, very important, like getting to know people. And that's another thing about the, the acceleration program that I'm really excited about is the networking and you can also network in, within the 3D character workshop. So, but going to um, expos like the Lightbox Expo or CTN or ZBrush Summit, um, those are really good to get to know people, meet people, get to know people. But if you're from another country, it might be very difficult to go to those things and meet people. So um, I think uh, is, is uh, Trojan Horse was a unicorn. Is, that's a expo. I think that's the closest one to you. That one's pretty good. I've never been, but I, I've been wanting to go. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Oh, did you find the... Thanks, Neil. Did you find the one we were talking about? Will I be in the sculpt off? Um, I don't know. I'm still going to be here. So it'll depend on... If... Yeah, it'll depend. <laughs> I've done it the last several years. I took third place the first time I did it, but it's been a while. So I, I don't know, we'll have to see what kind of energy. <laughs> More importantly, are you going to be in the sculpt top? You guys should. It's great, a great experience. You get hard. Dude, it was, I have to say that was one of the most stressful experiences I had because at the time I was in a room with some phenomenal, phenomenal sculptors. And like Michael Plouffe was sitting next to me um, and just, and oh geez, so, so many phenomenal sculptors. I was, I was so nervous that I had ear, earbuds in like this and the wire was laying across my chest and I could hear my heartbeat through my headphones, through the wire, because I was like, dig -oo, dig -oo, dig -oo, dig -oo. I was so nervous. Last year was super stressful, my first time, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, but like, it's one thing to do it um, like not when you're not there, like uh, off site, right? It's one thing to, to stream it, but this because you, you know that people are watching you, that's enough. But when you're there on site in this room, in this hot room, because all these computers are roaring and you're in this room with all these extraordinary sculptors and you just, I, I don't know, I had... I had really big uh, imposter syndrome going on there and um, it was just, yeah, it was crazy. But I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I had a lot of fun. And once it, once it was over anyway, you know, it's like, oh, glad that's, glad that's done, but it was fun. Met and I became friends with almost all of them, you know, it's really cool. Yeah, that's the networking part, right? It's like, then you can walk around and like Martin Van Hoven is one of my great, great friends now. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was beer time. <laughs> yeah. Or go, go chillax with some wine in the hot tub or something just to settle down. Yes, I highly recommend it. Uh, let's 
not what I wanted. Yeah, it is. But, you know, having said that, I mean, it's it's kind of hard when you can't see the person's face. But like yesterday on the at the Lightbox Expo on their Discord channel, they had a 3D, a 3D channel. And um, I was meeting and talking to people that I have not, not talked to before. So that I mean, that is a way to network, you know, finding stuff like that not the best way again because you can't see their face whoops I didn't mean to do that do this get that little curl going on the back there <laughs> and you thank you very much There's another one, Neil. <laughs> oh yeah, Marth yeah, Mar Martin Van Hosen. You you should check his stuff out if you haven't. It's so so good. He's very he's a very he does he likes monsters, and he likes uh, kind of. Um, I would say gory stuff. It's not really gory. It's like. I don't know. How would you explain it, Jimmy? Monster, like scary stuff. Yeah, he's great. First time I saw his work was in a book. And it's, it's really fun to meet people, you know, after you've seen their work somewhere else. And you're just like, oh yeah, it's you, you're that guy. Or girl. And I'm also so glad that there are more females in this industry, more and more. Um, and I, th I think I have a female coach lined up for my acceleration program. And I'm, I'm surprised at how many females I have in my workshop and I, it makes me super happy. Because when I first started in in the industry, it was a it was a bro fest. Oh my gosh! Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you need diversity and let's see. Let's go. Let's try this. Um. Sorry, I'm not saying, I'm probably not saying his name correctly. Van, I, I, I always call him Van der Hosen, but it's Van Hosen. He's from Belgium. I'm going to keep those groups. Sure, where are you? There you are. Keepy groups, there we are. Yeah, imposter syndrome is a real thing, for sure. Yeah, I couldn't imagine being a female when the the game industry first started. You know, it's and it's just full of males it it would be intimidating for sure okay i want to make this make this collar <laughs> i forget when you z remesh it it uh, clears off your uh poly paint so let's Come on, grab it. There we go. Let's fill it back up. Uh, 
I was the first lady to be an art lead at my studio, but we have much better diversity. I'll do, although I do still do the occasional over-sexualized, like, like the, the character that I, that I made for the main course. Let's see, split, mass points. But for the most part, I do a lot of cartooning characters or characters like this, you know. They're just fun. Whoops. <laughs> Wide head. I need to grab this one. I definitely think there's truth to that. A lot of female characters I see are clearly made to be sexual. It's so boring. Yeah. Well, if you go look at ArtStation, that's the majority, right? Yeah, appealing stylized characters are much more interesting to me. But at the same time, it's hard, it's hard knowing that um, that kind of stuff is what gets attention, especially on ArtStation. So it's, it's, it's hard to not do some of that stuff. I just got to get away from it. Whoa, too fast. I need to Z remesh this because it's super low. Look how low that is. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's Z remesh this at a one. Okay. So if if you Z remesh something and you didn't apply your dynamic, it's going to give you the polygons. So I'm going to do that and then apply it and then try it again. There we go. This hoodie, and I think this is a hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down in the back. It's like a hoodie under a, or over a jacket. Let's turn off back and curve. it again. Are you sculpting this for rigging or will it be just... Um, usually I sculpt for 3D printing. I should just put that in the... Like, like Ian does. I should put that in the description. In your last stream you had mentioned doing your own streams using Patreon-like system. You still think about doing that? Yes, I am. Um, you've had the opportunity to do any rigging and animation as of late? No, not, not as of late. Um, I've done it in my career in the past. Um, I was an animator for five years, and I, I've rigged for two years, I think, out of my career. But I kind of decided I'm just going to be a 3D modeler, and so that's what I, that's what I do. Okay, 
with these eyes, I think I'm going to paint them rather than live boolean them. Let's go. You just started rigging? Nice. It can be fun. It can be uh, puzzly, like like a puzzle challenge. Which is fun. Man, the bracket keys are so slow. Okay. Um, we got... Okay, that's too much. Let's try this. I'm just going to grab this blue color. Oh, thanks. I wish I could find a really good course on it. Um, I would look up. It's, it's like, it's like F rigging, something like that. Um, Justin Sobel, I think his name is. Yeah, he 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 does. Uh, he teaches a lot of rigging, and it's it's a good job. Okay, I'm going to. Josh, Josh Sobel, is that his name? I said Justin, didn't I? Thank you. Okay, why is that? Frigging, yep, that's it, frigging. That's what I was trying to say. All right, I don't know. So it's kind of more difficult to do. See if I can do a mask by intensity and sharpen. Let's see. Ryan, if you're still here, your uh, your grow and shrink mask thing. I want I want it because <laughs> I'm going to shrink the mask right now. And I want to be able to uh, turn on the auto shrink, which is awesome. All right, Jimmy, thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah, let's do. Okay, let's see. back to here so I can't see the mask very well so I'm gonna turn off the paint this is what the mask looks like invert this and then shrink it hey what's up Harry shrink, shrink. okay let's try that There we go. 
Yeah, I just want a little dark ring around there. Now it's masked off, and now I can do some cool stuff like uh, grab this airbrush, do some shadow, crank this RGB intensity. And do some, I like to go brighter. Maybe even a little turquoise right down here. To brighten that up. So the way um, yeah, the way your, your retinas work, irises work. Um, the light catches on the bottom and shadows the top because it's a cone that's going inward. And then we clear this mass now. Okay. Now we can paint the pupils. I want to go dark, Maybe less saturated. Luigi always paints big pupils. I don't know why this pressure isn't working like I want it to work. Uh, keep trying until it works. There we go. Did I start this on today's note? This is the second. This is the second round. Uh, let's see. Do I have zebra eye reflect? I do. Yeah, look at that. Boom. All right, let's fill these. Material. Go back to skin shade and show everything. Yeah, look at that. That's better. Yeah, yeah, I, just, I did her head last week. Okay, let's do some. Sorry, I got to take a break for a second. <laughs> this uh, this desk is a little high higher than I'm used to, and it's like tightening up my back. <laughs> oh, Carl. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the dad joke. Okay, do you usually keep perspective off while sculpting? Does it help with more accurate 3D printing? Um, no, um, it's actually a ZBrush thing. So if I'm anywhere except for ZBrush, I work in perspective. But if I'm in ZBrush, there are some of the tools that don't function very well with perspective turned on. So I will usually sculpt in orthographic but I will turn perspective on and off every once in a while to check it. Um, but I will, I will put it to, like see how that's too much. So I have these settings here. I'll change it to like 50 or 85. Like 50 is probably good. You can see that. Here, let me grab this color again and fill this. That's not the color of why is it? It's not quite a hundred here. There we go. Well, at my house when I have my um, 
my more ergonomic chair and my desk set up right, I can sculpt for several hours. But in a, this is like one of those glass desks. It's kind of high. So, and this chair is like, it's not an office chair. It's like a dining room chair. So it's not the most optimal. Okay. Go for like a reddish. Is that even going? And they adjusted the RGB intensity. I like it, but yeah, otherwise you get that fisheye. And you're trying to um, compensate for that, right? And then your scopes come out flat and you wonder why. fleshy tones. I want to put one more hair coming down off of here. Now let's use this appendage. Whoops. Not with symmetry turned on. Um, Ryan, that is from Zebro Materials. I don't know what he does. I think it's a matte cap. Isn't that awesome? Um, you can look up Zebro Eye Reflect. He's got a whole bunch of different materials. Um, let me see if I can show some to you. There's like, yeah, they are matte caps. So he's got the Zebro Paint, which is very close to the Skin Shade 4. Zebra modeling, which it's a good way to um, see your surface, kind of like red wax, but not red wax, so it's more more clean. Um, and then he's got Zebra Gray, which is another version of that. So when I'm checking my surfaces of my scopes, I'll I'll hop back and forth between those two just to see my uh, surface quality. And this eye reflect. Um, and the Zebro viewport and terracotta. Terracotta is more like it matches like real clay. Um, and then this Zebro silhouette is just makes it really dark so you can see the silhouette. Uh, <laughs> those, those eyes shining through like a cat at, in the night. So yeah, there's some, there's some cool ones here. So let's go Zebro paint. Let's see, the Zebro paint versus... Uh, uh, skin shade four, very subtle differences, but you can kind of see it's a little more shiny, so more like skin. I like it. I'm gonna split this off so I can use. So you can use the deformer on it. There we go. Well, actually, I go maybe just two dots. There we go.
All right. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but with that with that bend curve deformer, you can make it non-destructive by not not accepting it. So if you put it if you put a single hair in its own subtool like that, um, and then if you turn the gizmo on, as long as you see that orange gear, that means it's still in active uh, modifier mode. I call it a modifier because it's like modifiers in other programs, but um, as long as you don't move the gizmo away, like independently away from the where it's sitting right now, then it will still hold on to that um, that deformer. So I can come in back into bend curve. It's up here, and then I can still keep editing it. And you, it's nice because you can move it around. So I can go back to Gizmo 3D, and I can move it move it and scale it but I just can't move that I can't move the gizmo if like say if I want to put the gizmo at the start of this hair I can't do that because if you'll see as soon if I hold down option and move it you'll see that that gear goes gray meaning I I lost my connection so it no longer works uh, but I can always command Z or control Z it back yeah so Good to know. Oh, you found it. Thanks, Neil. I didn't know he had a gum road. That's cool. Okay, I'm trying to think of what else I want to do to this before I go. Maybe uh, I've got 15 minutes. Um, let's see. I can do a zipper. I can do a zipper kind of fun big fat zipper on there select this all right thanks for hanging out Ian take care man oh there we go and you can catch Ian on Sundays he streams on Sundays He's making an awesome demon hunter sculpt. Thanks, James. I'm trying, I'm trying. Let's paint her lips. She needs, she needs some color in her lips. One thing I do like about working in Sculptors Pro is you get a lot of density to paint your poly paint on. Go a little darker with the upper lip. Can't remember which part I poly grouped or not. So it's not perfect. There's still it's still jaggedy, but I can kind of come through here and smooth it out. Let's go a little darker. A little jaggedy still, but that's okay. Then maybe a little tiny bit, even though uh, Luigi doesn't have it painted here, um, a little tiny bit of eyeshadow up in here would do good. just to help the depth. Uh, 
There we go. All right. Oh, goodness sakes. <laughs> Two hours is my limit. Come to find out. Okay. Let's do um, insert multi mesh brush. Find that zipper. Where are my zippers? Thought I had, there's one. There's another one now. Maybe this one. <laughs> it's like gigantic. Look at that thing. It's funny because I only really want this this piece right here. But we'll we'll use this. Let's try and get it straighter. <laughs> it's going all over the place. Look at that. Gank. Pull it straight. So see, this is one of the things that doesn't work very well with perspective turned on. So I had to turn it off just so I can get that straight. Okay, get rid of that, split it. Everybody likes a skin tone zipper. Just want a couple of these pieces here. Delete those guys. Streams lagging, so I'm almost done here. Sorry guys. That zipper kind of feels weird. I'll have to work on it. Maybe bigger is better. It's a little too detailed for what she needs. But anyway, I think that's where I'm going to stop today. It's a good stopping point. Crank up those subdivisions on that. There we go. Our neck's feeling a bit long, so I gotta fix that too. <laughs> so let's turn perspective back on. 85. All right. Yep. Like I said, I think her neck's looking pretty long, so I gotta, I gotta shrink that up. But maybe I'll just do that really quick. 
before we go. We have time. This bigger. Now with this, I'm going to use a trick uh, my friend Ronnie showed me. If you zoom, basically I want to mask this head, right? Um, I solo this. If I mask this off right like this, um, it's going to take me a long time to, to sit and tap on this to get it to blur and blend, right? Um, so instead, I'm going to go out of perspective. If you zoom clear out, like way back here, and then put a mask on there, it gives you a nice blend. See that blend right there? Yeah, that's what I want. So now I can, when I, when I scrunch it, I can bring it up like this. Actually, it's too, too much of a, the blend's too close to the base. So let me clear that and fix it. Do it again. So let's do maybe right here. Yeah, it's kind of a pain to zoom in and out, but man, it works, it works well. So thanks, Ronnie. Like he can hear me. Funny work for Hasbro for a while. Okay, that is better. Now she's got a little crook in her neck. I'll just smooth that right out. Crank it. Oh, does it run? Ryan to the rescue again. Nice, dude. I got to get in there. It looks like a slideshow. I'm sorry about that. I think that's where I'm going to end today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Catch me next time, next Monday live. And